here at the Cold Brook River Lake. Again, this is another um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project. This is the dam. And we're in the area of the Winstead Wildman. Uh, Wildman, before there was such a term as Bigfoot, that's what they would be called a lot of times in different places. Wild men or some kind of hairy man or something like that. Even some Native Americans in the Pacific Northwest refer to Bigfoot as hairy man. Um, so we're in the, we're just in the area. We're out investigating today. And this guy here, look at that, he just picked up some trash. How cool is that? You know, we do some more stuff like that. People just pass it by. And uh, let's not pollute to begin with, but if you see something like that, just pick it up. We're going to go check out, look for this wild man. Uh, maybe I'll get the $5 reward, because if I see this wild man that was reported about 9 feet tall, I am going to tackle him. And uh, I have some duct tape, I have some gorilla tape, so that's how we're going to subdue him. And, and I'll cash in on my own reward. Let's get in there. So if you see this pond down here, uh, through the algae and the moss, uh, you could see these lines, these sort of lines that cut through there. You seen that camera person? And in the back, of course, there's a really cool, uh, the remains of an old homestead over there with just the uh, stone chimney remaining. But those lines, those are formed by beavers and those will be their swimways and they'll keep those open all year. They'll dig them out if they get, um, Fogged up with aquatic vegetation, and uh, in the winter they'll keep those lanes open. So that's nice because fish can use those if the pond freezes over. Um, fish can use those as a sort of travel ways and help them stay alive. Winter's tough. And look at this view we got here. So this is a wildlife refuge, and you got other than the highway here, other than this route, Route 8, you got pretty open forest land. It's pretty mountainous it's, it's mountainous we got a siren head over here and we're just joking with that siren head thing but we had fun with the kids on that but that's what the kids think it looks like that's obviously a cell phone tower um, but let's get in there this this is squatchy other than route 8 like I said this is real squatchy yeah Now we're at the reservoir. This is the boat launch. And uh, like any Army Corps of Engineers and a lot of reservoirs, I'm surprised they even let you have um, any kind of contact. But you're limited to just getting your boat in and that's it. Army Corps of Engineers is famous for, listen, do not break the rules here. They will come down on you like a ton of bricks. They're not kidding. One person has drowned in this lake. Wearing your life jackets, nobody has drowned. Not wearing life jackets, one person drowned. Let's go over to the kiosk. Oh, we just picked this up. Your state-by-state state guide. Uh, again, this is federal. Army Corps of Engineers goes all throughout the country, Alaska and Hawaii. Um, but I can pretty much tell you, don't break the rules. <laughs> I, I know from experience. So, Trout Lake. Here we just stopped in over here. We're traveling Route 8. Um, we're right now at this boat launch. Look at how large this is. This goes from Connecticut, Colebrook, Connecticut, into Sandusfield, Mass. Uh, this is a bass management lake. And I told you about the rules and regulations. They're not kidding, seriously. And I'm giving you good advice here. I'm not joking around. 
They say no drinking. All of these Army Corps of Engineers are alcohol free. They really mean it. Uh, they're really, a lot of times, some of the most beautiful places. There's a bathroom here, there's a facility. Um, rarely do they have campgrounds, but there are some. And, but this is, wow, is this watch. Wow, we're gonna continue up into Sanders Field Mass. What do you think, camera person? Yeah, all right, so we'll go up. What's this steel bridge here? See that? And there's parking. That might be a good destination for us. So we'll continue up this Route 8. Uh, looks like when you get into the West Branch Farmington River right here, there's something called the Steel Bridge. I think I've been there. I think one of the very first episodes videoed of CSIS was there. Um, and this is all forest land. You know, Squatch doesn't understand this state boundary. No animals do. This is something that's completely man-made. Um, but this is all forest land. Wide open. Oh, let's get down there. We just came back from Maine. We did all of Maine. We went down east to the White Mountains. The only where the only area we didn't go is up north. But this this has that feel. You know, like a like an alpine lake. Now it's a reservoir. It's artificially raised from the Farmington River. This is where the headwaters for the Connecticut section of the Farmington River is. We're going to continue up along the Farmington River and we're just going to check things out and see what's out there. You get any today? No, not today. No? Oh, man. Well, there are some nice ones in here. There's no... Uh, I'm not aware of northern pike in here, but uh, not, not too long ago, last year, a woman angler caught a large chain pickle. It was as big as a northern pike. It was made the newspapers. It was a state record. Chain pickle. And it was a monster. So probably these chain pickle have a lot of forage base and they're just getting large, as large as northern pike. Leaves are starting to change here. You could just see it. There's sort of brightening Getting that yellow going on in the maples. In a couple more weeks, we're gonna have. This is a cool place. To... What do you think? You liking this camera person? It, uh, it looks like it's gonna rain, so we're doing more of a exploration. But let's go see if we can't find that steel bridge and do some howls over there. Continue with our day. Get your state by state guide. Get the last one. We'll put it up for auction. Okay, you make us a bid, you might get this. 